Hydraulic rim brakes on road bikes. Were they an epic fail or just a misunderstood product? Well, if their popularity today is anything to go by, epic fail could be the answer. But why did this happen and why do they even exist in the first place? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through the history, explain how the tech worked, discuss the pros and cons of hydraulic rim brakes and highlight the rare cases when they were actually used in pro racing. Hydraulic rim brakes were an evolution of cable rim brakes and a short-lived gateway to the shift to hydraulic disc brakes. In terms of their use on road bikes, well, they used existing mounting points on frames and forks, meaning that they were in theory a fairly simple upgrade to make. The potential advantages were improved braking power, increased control, they required less input from the rider and the system required less maintenance. Now this all sounds amazing, but the reality wasn't quite as simple as that. There were huge compatibility issues with certain frames and hydraulic dual control levers weren't really a thing and many of the pitfalls of a rim brake system still existed, such as having inconsistent braking power in varying conditions and the fact that your expensive wheels would eventually get worn away from the brake pads. In terms of road bikes then, the use cases are particularly limited, but it was in the mountain bike world where you had more of a success story, and this was where the technology was first developed and launched. Magura were first to the party here in 1987. Hydrostop was their product, and it used all their experience and knowledge from the motorcycle world to develop powerful bicycle brakes, and it was regarded as a huge success with bicycle manufacturers placing big orders. Over time, the Hydrostop calipers saw a number of different evolutions. You had the HS11 and HS33 brakes. Now these were more refinements to the system rather than a total overhaul. The increased power that came from a hydraulic system though did cause some problems in other ways, such as early frames and forks had not really been designed with these forces in mind, and when you applied the brakes it would flex the frame open when full power was used, which was far from ideal. The solution? A brake booster, essentially a U-shaped metal brace to support the frame and fork and stop that awful flex. Now the way in which the system worked is thankfully fairly simple and similar to how a modern disc brake works. You have a completely sealed system full of brake fluid. One end you have the brake lever with a single piston and then the other end you have the brake caliper with two smaller opposing pistons which house the brake pads. Linking the two together is a brake hose. Now, as you pull the brake lever at one end, hydraulic fluid is forced from the lever end of the system through to the caliper end. And because you simply cannot compress a liquid, the extra volume at the caliper forces the pistons to expand and apply the brake pads to contact the wheel rim just in the same way as how a traditional rim brake works. Now, as the brake lever is released, fluid is drawn back up the system as the piston in the brake lever returns to its starting point and therefore the brake pads retract back. This early design for mountain bikes is, however, one that did stand the test of time. But when it comes to road bikes, well, it's a very different story. Firstly, the frame flex issue was no more because road calipers mounted using a single bolt and the brake forces are confined to the brake caliper rather than stressing the frame, which was at least a good start. Now there were a couple of different products that came to market and most notable were the ones from SRAM and Magura. Magura made the chunky RT8C and RT6C hydraulic calipers, which first launched back in 2012 alongside the launch of the Cervelo P5 time trial bike and originally were only available as part of the bike before being available separately a whole year later. And then SRAM released their compact Hydro R calipers as part of the SRAM Red 22 launch, which also included a disc brake option but we'll just ignore that for now. The price for this kind of tech back then? Well, you're looking at around £400 for the Magura brakes, which even by today's super inflated prices was a lot, and at the time was about four times the price of a pair of standard Shimano 105 rim brake calipers. The SRAM system, however, was launched as part of a full group set, 
which meant cleaner integration and compatibility with almost any bike, although you did have to use levers with a much larger top section to house the master cylinder, which at the time felt like a frustrating backward step. Thankfully now though, modern group sets don't have this and everything has been slimmed down. A very youthful looking Psy actually filmed this group set and the brakes fitted to Mark Cavendish's bike back in 2013, ahead of its first use in the Tour de France that year. So here is Ben Raby from SRAM and also Mark Cavendish's bike, which today made a little bit of history because it's the first time that a bike with hydraulic brakes has been used in a road race. So our uh, product management team uh, introduced Hydro R technology, which is a hydraulic braking systems for road uh, category, and that includes rim brakes and disc brakes. Now, I'm not aware of any other times that this braking technology has been used in pro racing. So if you have any examples, please do let me know in the comments. In fact, looking back through all the comments on size video did make me laugh because there are at least three different people who asked what happened to this hydraulic rim brake technology. So in that case, this video is specifically for you. The Magura system could be used as a full hydraulic system using a special time trial brake lever called the RT8TT, or it could be used with a cable to hydraulic converter box which is placed underneath the stem of the bike. This allowed for brake cables to run from existing dual control levers to the converter box, which contained a master cylinder to operate the hydraulic system, which went downstream to the rim brake calipers. The Magura calipers were made from magnesium to help to reduce the weight, but they were still heavier and much larger in their overall design compared to cable rim brake calipers, and ultimately is what led to many of the compatibility issues on the majority of frames and forks. That overall larger size simply meant it wasn't possible to install them onto the, the rear of bikes and onto the forks without coming into contact with other sections of the frame. Now a combination of all of the above issues contribute together to what I believe is the reason why hydraulic rim brakes were not a commercial success. But there's also one really big factor that halted things. And this was the fact that the UCI decided to allow disc brakes to be used in races. Initially in cyclocross during the 2010 and 2011 season, and then I can only assume manufacturers had insider knowledge or a strong suggestion that disc brakes would soon be allowed on the road racing scene too, which is why I believe the development of the hydraulic rim brake system was fairly limited, and then there was a huge shift from the bike industry to go all in on disc brakes, which led to a huge development across various products and components throughout the entire bike industry. So there you go. That's my take on hydraulic rim brakes, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. But what do you think? Well, share your thoughts in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, well, please share it far and wide with all of your friends, and also give this video a thumbs up. Right, that is enough chat about hydraulic rim brakes. I'm out of here. See you guys later. Bye.